Even if I was artistic, I don't want to have to be on my A-game every time I come into the office. If we were out late the night before watching Monday Night Football and I got three hours of sleep, I don't want to have to come in and be brilliant. I want to have a technique, a checklist, a set of instruments so that I can get these results whether I'm half asleep or at the top of my game. This is the incisal edge reduction. Again, this all depends on what material you were using. You could go as conservative as six tenths of a millimeter for a zirconia material up here or one millimeter for lithium disilicate. We're actually doing two millimeters because this was a kind of a standard prep technique for bilayered restorations back in the day when we were doing this and a lot more PFMs being done. So those depth cuts are done. So now I know how much I have to reduce there. So we've got our gingival third depth cut. We've got our incisal third depth cut. Now I need one more depth cut, my axial depth cut. And this one moved over the years and it moved closer and closer to the incisal edge because this is what I needed to do to get rid of my Bucky Beaver preps. So here's a great look at what this depth cut actually looks like. So start up the handpiece, boom, push it down, it seats and it won't go any farther. There we go. So that's how quick these depth cuts are. And it was a great look at it in cross section seeing it done. Actually now, I, even now I put that depth cut, that 1.5 millimeter axial depth cut you just saw demonstrated, I put that a little bit closer to the incisal edge. I put it literally just below where my incisal edge depth cuts are just to make sure that I can't have a Bucky Beaver prep because I have to reduce down to where that depth cut is. It's impossible to have a Bucky Beaver prep when you put that depth cut right where it is. Now basically we've got all the depth cuts where they need to be and it's just time to blend all of these. This is where you're really free to fly.